Hi, my name is Dr. Joseph Camo, Associate Professor of Sociology, and today I'm going to explain to you Robert K. Merton's strain theory, also known as Merton's typology of deviance. Now, the main thing you have to understand about this theory is it has to do with sort of this tension or strain that exists when society tells us there's certain things we should want, but doesn't provide the means for everyone to attain those things. So society tells us there's certain things we should want in life, a good paying job, buying a house, owning a car, going on vacations, having a hobby, things like that. And these are the kinds of things that our culture has taught us we should want, particularly if you live in the United States. Sometimes we call this the American dream, this sort of middle-class idealized life. So many of us have been raised in this culture that tells us we should want this. So what Merton's talking about is when there is this strain, this tension between this goal that culture says you should want and an opportunity structure and an institutionalized way of getting those things that doesn't work for everyone, may not be fully accessible to all people, the means to acquire that or scarce so not everyone can have it, that creates this tension and people in that situation start to look for alternatives. If I can't have this goal the way it's been defined by culture, maybe I can have a different goal. Or maybe if I can't reach that goal by the way that society has told me I should, I can find another way to reach that goal. Or maybe I will just decide to opt out altogether and not pursue that goal. All these different alternatives are part of Merton's typology of deviance because the normative or normal cultural norm is to pursue those goals and to pursue them the ways that society says is okay to do so. For example, pursuing that ideal that has been called the American dream. Well, society says the way you're supposed to do that is work hard, go to college, work your way up in some sort of career, and then have the income that allows you to buy the things that are associated with the American dream. So that's considered the norm. Opting to go in a different direction than that is technically considered deviance. Now the sociological idea of deviance doesn't necessarily inherently mean bad. In its purest form, the word deviance sociologically just means that there's some sort of societal idea about what things are supposed to be, and the person who goes against those in some way is engaging in deviance. Now, there are historical examples of deviance that's been a good thing. Think about the civil rights movement, that civil disobedience was technically going against the cultural norm of the day. But deviance can also involve things that people would widely consider bad, like violence and other forms of criminal behavior. But the important point to understand for Merton's typology of deviance is that what we're talking about is that there's a cultural norm and people who choose to go in a different direction are technically engaging in some form of deviance. So getting back to Merton's strain theory and typology, he looked at these situations where there's some sort of cultural norm and ways that society says, yes, this is how you get that. These are the ways we approve pursuing that goal or what he called the institutionalized means those means of acquiring the thing that have been accepted and ingrained in our social institutions. Merton took those and created this typology that looks at how people respond to those strange situations. And this typology is essentially a set of categories of responses. And Merton identified five of these categories, conformity, innovation, ritualism, retreatism, and rebellion. Merton's idea was to create these categories in such a way that virtually any reaction one would have to that strain could be fit into one of those five categories. And he defined these categories based on whether the individual accepted or rejected that cultural goal, and if they accepted or rejected that institutionalized means of attaining the goal. Now, when Merton originally published this, he put it in a table layout. He listed the five categories of the typology and two columns, one for the goals and one for the means, and add a plus or a minus to indicate whether that was accepted or rejected. Now, more recently, sociologists and educators have put this typology in sort of a graph based on these quadrants. And this graph sort of gives it more of a visual representation. Now, when you look at it, you see on the left axis, you have the cultural goals, whether they are accepted or rejected. On that top axis, you see the institutionalized means. And again, whether they're accepted or rejected. So if someone accepts the goal and the means, they fit into the conformity typology. So the example of this would be that person who says, yes, I want that American dream. I'm going to go get a college degree, get a good paying job, buys a house, goes on vacations, buys a boat. You get the idea. But if the individual accepts the goal, they want those things, but they reject the institutionalized means. They say, I am not willing to go through the things that society tells me I'm supposed to go through to get those things. I want to find a different path, but they still accept the goal. They want those things. 
they just don't want to do it the way society says you should. They're rejecting the institutionalized means. That person would fit into the innovation category. Now this could be someone who tries to get into some burgeoning source of income. For example, someone who got into cryptocurrency. Or it could be someone who's making money through criminal activities like theft or drug traffic. That person is still pursuing the goal of having a good income and a home and all of those kinds of things but they're rejecting the institutionalized means of doing so and looking for a different path. Now, the next typology is ritualism. This is someone who has rejected the goal, but accepts the means. Now, what does that look like? Well, let's say you have someone who has given up the hope of having that sort of high income, American dream sort of life, but they continue to drudge along and work for a low wage and go through the motions in that corporate culture or whatever it is, but they've just sort of given up the hope of ever attaining that sort of American dream ideal. This person who sort of just going through the motions, going through those institutionalized means, going to work, getting a paycheck, paying their bills, but really has given up on the actual goal itself would be considered ritualism. The next category is retreatism. And as you see on the chart, this is the person who's rejected both the goal and the means. This person sort of decides to opt out of it all. They want no part of the rat race. They're not trying to pursue a high paying career or buying a home or anything like that. They are sort of just retreating from the whole mess. Now this could look a couple different ways. Imagine someone who sort of goes through life couch surfing, maybe sort of an artistic type who just does enough work to pay their bills and have something to eat, but isn't really trying to get ahead. Or imagine someone who's just living off the grid and the remote wilderness of Alaska. They go out there and build their own cabin and hunt their food, but don't really engage with society any more than they absolutely have to. These types of individuals would fit into that retreatism category. Now, finally, we get to this fifth category that Merton included, rebellion. And this one is sort of altogether different. This individual not only rejects the goals and the means, but also replaces it with a completely different goal and means. Now, in his original work, Merton included a footnote that described this as an effort to change the norms of society itself. Itself, trying to bring about a change to what society says we should want and how we should attain it. So in order for this to be rebellion and not just say retreatism, the individual needs to be actively trying to do something that brings about a change. Now, an example of this might be someone who's living a minimalist life and is an activist who's trying to educate people on the dangers of overconsumption of goods to both our own mental well-being and the well-being of our environment. Someone who's trying to change the norm so that people aren't pursuing that sort of rat race, American dream, or whatever you wanna call it. So this is Merton's typology. Again, he basically says, that whatever reaction a person has that strain should be able to fit into one of these five categories. Now, originally Merton's theory was used to describe criminal behavior, how that sort of societal strain, that inability for everyone to have access, that sort of American dream that we talk about, how that would lead to criminal behavior. But this theory can be applied to a lot of situations, not just criminal deviance. You could use it to explain how and why people pursue different educational and career goals. For example, the conformity typology might be someone who goes to college to pursue a high paying career, but the innovation type might be the person who starts their own business without a college degree, looking for another path to that income. The ritualism person could be someone who goes to college but doesn't really try to advance their career, just kind of goes through the motions. And the retreatism person would be someone who doesn't really pursue any form of higher education or developing a higher paying career and just sort of gets by. And then the rebelling category might be someone who actively tries to encourage people, hey, you don't have to go to college to get a high paying career. Let's try to value things like vocational education, etc. You could apply this theory to a lot of different things, but the main thing you have to understand again is that there are these goals that society says that we should want. And when those goals are not widely available, there is a strain or a tension. And when people face that tension, when people are in a situation where they're not all easily able to obtain or pursue that goal, people deviate. They go in different directions and Merton's typology creates a category in which all those different reactions should be able to fit. I hope this video helped you to understand Robert Merton's strain theory. Please be sure to click like and subscribe for more sociology videos.